Okay. So we did not give a name to our class, and I think we can give a name. I'm just trying to think of everything we're learning. Um, you know, the Chaim Shachare Chaim in Hebrew, the life that is after the life, the life that is after life. The Pasha this week is called Chaye Sarah, and these were the life of Sarah. Shnei Chaye Sarah, it speaks about Sarah. Now, when it's, when we learn the Parshas in the Torah, every Parsha has a name. And the names were chosen very carefully. It wasn't just by random, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the name was given to the Parsha. Everything has a reason. When we look in the Parsha, the Parsha is called the life of Sarah. But really, in this Parsha, Sarah already passed away. It speaks about how Avram was looking for a place, a lot, to bury her. And, um, and Sarah was buried, and everybody was mourning her. And then it speaks about that... Uh, Yitzchak got married with Rivka and everything came back to the tent, whatever Sarah had, we'll hopefully mention it soon, all the merits that Sarah had came back to Rivka, so Yitzchak knew she was the right um, wife for him, and everything is after Sarah's life. So why is this Parsha called the life of Sarah? And... Um, the answer is that this is exactly the answer. As we said, life, the true life, the life after life. What is true life? True life, life never stops. True life is always there. You know, it says about Yaakov, Yaakov Avinu, it says Yaakov Avinu lo met. Yaakov, our forefather, did not die. What does it mean? And there was spoke about it. It says that they made him a coffin and they and they mourned for him and they carried him all the way to Israel, right? Because he passed away in Egypt. They carried him all the way to Israel and there was a big funeral. What does it mean he did not die? And the commenters explain, Mazaro Bachaim Afu Bachaim. Zaro means his descendants, his children. If his family, his children, his offsprings are alive, that means he is alive, which means that the Torah is teaching us that true life never stops. And in a way, how do we know that somebody lived really true life in this world is when they are passed on, their life, their legacy continues, their children, their family continue their life, continue in their footsteps, continue the right way of Torah. And that's how we keep our parents alive, those of us who lost, unfortunately. Bezat Hashem, as we always say, and we believe very strongly that Moshiach is coming soon, and we are not going to have to go through death. But those ones who did pass on, the way we keep the life, their life alive, them alive. Hello, Janina. Welcome. We, through continuing in their legacy in the right way. And that's what Tori is saying. That's exactly why it says, why the Parsha is called Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah. Although, when you look in the Parsha, it discusses her funeral, her burial, her children that took over after her, how they continue their legacy, because this is the true life. Obviously, when we are alive, we are alive, but that shows that the kids, her, her children, Yitzchak and Rivka, continued and everything that she taught. And we see here also, the Torah is bringing the difference between Sarah and Avraham. Sarah was very special. She was very complete. She was very wholesome. I know that last week we had learned in, in the part in the parsha that it spoke when Hashem told Avraham, "Call Asher Tomar Alecha Sarah Shma Bekula." Everything what Sarah will tell you, listen to her voice. It's a very strong statement in the Torah, very profound statement. And we'll learn from it many things. One is that uh, Sarah was in a higher level 
in prophecy than Avraham, but not only Sarah, it says Kola Imaot, all the our matriarch, Sarah, Rivka, Rochon, Leah were had a higher level of prophecy than um, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. We remember also, uh, if you remember from last year, we're going to be learning soon when Yitzchak wanted to bless his sons, right? Yitzchak later on when he had these two, his twins, Esau and Yaakov. And Yitzchak wanted to bless Esau. And Rivka was the one she knew that the blessings have to go to Yaakov. She knew that Yaakov is the one that continue the chain from Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, all the Jewish people, not Aesop. So she made in her own tricky way, as we're gonna discuss later, that, Yitz, that Yaakov should get the blessings. She didn't argue with her husband, she just did it in her way, and then her husband Yitzchak was very happy. So we see from it ways that the mothers were on a higher level. I want to bring in something a little bit, um, if I may, a little bit Kabbalah, uh, something a little bit harder to understand, and hopefully we'll be able to grasp a little bit from it, and we can continue some other time, perhaps. When my son of Remy called me today, he usually calls me Baruch Hashem every day from France, and on Thursday, sometimes it goes a little bit later because Thursday night there is such a custom that it's called Lel Shishi, the eve of the sixth day, Shishi, Yom HaShishi, right? The Friday called Yom Shishi in Hebrew, in the Torah. So there is a custom that Thursday night in Yeshiva, Hasidim, they bring, they stay a little bit later as a preparation for Shabbos. If you remember, I mentioned also when we spoke about accounting of the soul, Cheshbona Nefesh, how we do accounting of the soul. So we do it um, once a year before Rosh Hashanah, once a month before Rosh Chodesh, and once a week before Shabbos on Thursday. And every day before we go to sleep, we say Shema. So Thursday is a special night that people stay longer to learn, to think how the week was, uh, to ponder, to think how can I make the next week better, which Shabbos is coming, what's special about the Shabbos, about the parsh? you know, it's a special time to get elevated. So he goes usually to sleep a little bit later because they go to some place in France to learn with uh, yeshiva or some men that learning anyway. So they were, so he called me, it was a little bit later already by him, but here was like four o'clock by him, but it was 12 or so. So I said, Shlom, uh, before you hang up, tell me something about the Parsha. So he said it to me in one sentence, very quickly, very high, and I tried to explain it a little bit. He says, you know, the Rebbe speaks about that, that phrase in the Torah. It's not just a commentary, it's in the Torah. When Avraham told Sarah, when, when Avraham did not know what to do with Ishmael, Ishmael, his son from Hagar, was not behaving well, and he was becoming a bad influence to Yitzchak. And Sarah knew. Sarah Imenu had a high level of prophecy and she knew that she must save Yitzchak. She has to educate him well. And she knew that unfortunately, Ishmael is not going to continue in the right ways of Avraham and he's going to stray and he's going to do wrong things, no matter what we will teach him. So she knew that Ishmael had to leave. And she said to Avram, you have to tell Ishmael to leave the house because otherwise Yitzchak is, is gonna learn and so on. And Avram didn't know what to do. Avram said, but he's also my son. What should I do? And he asked God. Imagine if we were that privileged when we have a dilemma what to do, we can ask God. But obviously Avram and Sarah were so connected. They were so spiritual. So Avram asked Hashem, asked God, what should I do? I don't want to chase him away. I don't want to tell him to leave. I mean, and Sarah is telling me to tell him to leave because we have to guard Yitzchak because from Yitzchak will come out all the Jewish people and so on. And I don't know what to do. So what did Hashem tell him? Hashem didn't tell him just, listen, yeah, Sarah is right. You have to send Ishmael away, unfortunately. But he told her a very strong answer. He said, Call Asher Tomar Lechasara, everything that Sarah tells you. So the Rebbe explains it in a high level is that when Mashiach will come, the women 
the feminine qualities will be on a higher level than the masculine, than the men. Then we're going to see really the true and the high level, what, what uh, the feminine power of Hashem has to offer. As we know that Hashem has two powers, the masculine and the feminine. And in the time of Golos, in the time of exile, many times it may seem that the masculine power is more important. They do more the physical work, they go to war, they do this, they do that. It seems on, on, the, on the surface can seem that way. But as we're getting closer to the time of Mashiach, very close, we see how the feminine values are valued in the whole world. People speak more about negotiating, if there is a fight, if there is this, even God forbid, in a divorce, you know, this. How can we do things or um, wars before it was more things, let's kill this, let's kill that. Now nations are speaking to each other. Let's see how we can make peace without killing people. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of terrible, terrible things, but it's so much less than it was years ago. People would hit the children, the spouses, you didn't listen, you hit, you, you punish with a stick, with this. Now we know we have to speak, we have to explain everything. The, the feminine part that we have it so much from Hashem to be more soft, to be more understanding and give, have more empathy and so on and so forth will be more revealed. Avraham and Sarah were so high, were so special, were so holy that they already lived how we're going to live in the time, in the era of Moshiach. They lived in the highest times that God willing, we should be li living in them soon. So that's why, isn't that amazing? That's why Hashem told Avraham, Kol asher tomar alecha Sarah, shma bekola. Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her, because you are already in that time, he was able to understand, to feel the time of Mashiach, that you have to listen to the feminine part. You have to listen to the woman, to the feminine part. It says when Mashiach will come, nekeva tesovev gever. Nekeva means the feminine, right? The female, female tesovev will go around, gever around the men, which means that the woman will go around the men, she'll be controlling, she'll be the, her, her powers, what she has to offer will be and a higher level than the men. A woman is compared to malchut, to kingdom. A king has a keter on top of the head. Yeah, the man can be the head of the house, but the woman is the crown, right? Eshet um, chayil ateret ba'ala. A woman of valor is ateret. Ateret is the beauty also, but it's also like the crown of her husband, goes on top of the head. So this is just a little bit deeper explanation I wanted to bring in when Hashem, when Hashem told Avram, Kol asher alecha sarai, everything that Sarah tells you, listen to her voice, because they lived the year of Mashiach, and the year of Mashiach, everybody will recognize that the feminine part of Hashem, which we represent, us women represent, is really on a higher level. And that's the way to act with explaining, with having empathy, with understanding, with not yelling, not screaming, not fighting, not doing radical things, but with softness, which many times in today's world, people take it as a weak, or a woman is weak, she won't fight for this and she won't. It's not good to fight and to argue and to scream. We have to do it in a nice way, and this is the best way, that's the way it should be. So we explained a little bit, how that we are, uh, what does the Torah mean? That's why the Parsha is called Chayei Sarah, the life of Sarah, because the true life we were able to see, even though it doesn't speak about her life in this world, but her life of the Neshama. Our soul never stops living. Sarah's soul never stopped living. Our soul was alive before and it's alive by us and it's always going to be alive, amen, with the time of Mashiach. And how we know that somebody is alive. The true life is when the children continue in their life, in their legacy, in the right way. Something else that we want to learn also about Sarah that is very interesting. It says, Bayu Chayei Sarah, right? The life of Sarah, 
שני חיי שרה, the two lives of Sarah. What does it mean, the two lives of Sarah? And it says the, the age. She passed away when she was 127. But it doesn't say 127. Every time it says year. 100 years, 100 years, 20 years, and 20 years, and 7 years, and 7 years, and 7 years. Shnei chayei Sarah, the two life of Sarah. What does it mean? And what the Torah explains to us that Sarah was very special, Sarah Imenu. It says that when she was 20, she was as beautiful as when she was seven, which means like, you know, a child, the skin, everything is so beautiful, doesn't dry, it, it, it looks amazing. So when she started becoming an adult, as when we become in our adult or 20 years old and so on, she still looked as fresh as and young as a seven-year-old. And when she was a hundred years old, she didn't have any scenes as she, when she was 20. Why does it say 20? Because according to the Torah, um, a person is not being punished, God forbid, by the court of heaven till the age of 20. We do know that when we turn for girls, when we turn bat mitzvah at the age of 12, and boys turn bar mitzvah at the age of 13, we become responsible. We have to keep the whole, all the mitzvot. We have to keep Shabbos and kashos and everything that we have to do, tefillin for the boys, for the girls, the youth and candles for Shabbos and so on. As an adult, we become as adults. I mean, we're not as adults, you know, we're driving with this. In most countries, we wait till the age of 18, some is 21, for driving, for drinking, whatever. Drinking is not so good, but you know what I mean, certain ages. But according to Torah, but mitzvah and bar mitzvah, you become an adult as far as keeping the um, merit that we have, the schut, that we have to keep mitzvot. In Torah, if somebody is doing something wrong, they are not punishable by the Beidin Shalmala, by the court of heaven, till the age of 20. So the Torah is telling us that when Sora was 100 years old, she was as clean as she was 20. Because till 20, really she wouldn't be punishable. She wouldn't be responsible for anything, according to Torah. By, by punishable by, by Torah law, and she had no sins. So Sora was as beautiful when she was older as when she was young. She had no sins, no wrongdoings as when she was young, and when she got old, she still had no wrongdoings. This is something, an amazing, an amazing quality to have. And it says that Sora was very beautiful. Right? We just said that when she was old, she didn't look old, she didn't have sins, so she was beautiful on the spiritual side because she didn't have any sins. And it says she was beautiful physically as well. How can that be? It kind of two opposites. So how can we understand it? Obviously, when it speaks about beauty, for Sara Imenu, we know that the Torah does not speak only about physical beauty, but also about spiritual beauty, because she had no sins. So she was beautiful in both. And how do we explain it? The body, physicality, and the neshama, the soul, spirituality, godliness, is the opposite each other. Physical things become old, they disappear, they, they are limited to time and space. That's what a creation is. Hashem created the world, He created time and space. And that's why we are not able to understand, it's impossible for us to understand what does it mean to be above time and space. That for Hashem, everything is the same. For God is... One day is like a thousand, a thousand years like one day. Whatever was then, whatever it's now, whatever will be is one thing. It's impossible for us to understand. It's like you're going to take a very, very, and I love animals. And you're going to take a very, very, and we have a list here which loves animals too. We all love animals. You'll take a very smart cat. It's a very, very smart 
cat or a dog, smart animal, and you're going to try to teach it how to read. Well, they can't learn how to read. They learn many things. They feel and they're amazing. They protect and many qualities. But to learn how to read, it's not something that Hashem meant to the most clever animal. You're going to take to teach how to read to a very clever baby. If it's a child, a baby, a two months old baby, three months, they can be very developed and very smart, but you can't say they're not smart enough. It's not in their capacity because that's the way Hashem created the world. It's very hard for us to understand how can you be in the same place at the same time? I am here now. I'm now in Calgary in the room giving you a class and speaking with you. I can see you here, whoever is on the screen. I can see the names. I cannot see what's happening now in New York where my husband is, which I'll share with you soon. I cannot see, I can imagine, but I cannot see because I am limited by time and space. I cannot live what will be tomorrow. I cannot feel it now and, and, and whatever happened in the past happened in the past. I can live the now, I can make the future better. I can, you know what I'm trying to say. And that's how we are, our body and our neshama, our goof, our body and our neshama, our soul, our kind of contradict each other. So the body becomes old because of time and space. We travel somewhere, we get tired, and so on. And, and with the years, we wear ourselves out, and we get wrinkles, and we cannot be as strong, and we are wiser. We're not speaking about that, but, but wise, again, um, wisdom is something godly you can't feel wisdom in your hands it's something spiritual so as we get older we get wiser we're very smart uh, we have hopefully we have more uh, experience we can give advice we understand life in a better way we many times say if i only knew if i only knew but it's not good to have guilt i would do things differently so we share we try to you know make less mistakes so on and so forth a soul and a shama our souls that we all have inside of us, they don't, the soul doesn't have the restraint of time and space. The neshama is always there. It doesn't get tired, doesn't get sick because it gets old and so on and so forth. So it's two opposite. Sarah was on such a high level that she was able to, and I want to tell girls, it's the first time that I learned that the Rebbe is saying, that she was so complete and so wholesome and so special and so holy that the life of the neshama, the light of the neshama, the godliness of her soul radiated so much in her body that her body was so godly that her body did not look old. Wouldn't we love all that to happen to us? She looked young. When she was older, when she was old, she looked young because she was so complete and so special and did not do wrong things, which is so hard not to do wrong things. And she did so many mitzvot that the purity of her soul, the godliness, affected her physicality, affected her body, and her body did not get old, didn't get wrinkles, didn't get to to be to look worn out, and she looked as beautiful as people look when they are young. When we get older, we also look beautiful. It's a different beauty. But she looked as beautiful as a young person because the light, they're be saying the light of her neshama was so shining, was so permeated in her body, was so strong that it had an effect on her body, the way her body looked. And as we said, the body has time and space, right? But the neshama doesn't. And that gave, um, sorry, I'm just gonna look here. Let's give together women, women are stuck. Yeah, that's, um, at least regarding the get, I wouldn't bring it up now. It's a lot to answer, but it's a good question that you have and perhaps We'll do it another time, or I can try to answer you another time because we'll not have it's a subject on its own, a very difficult subject uh, to discuss and to explain and to understand. 
Um, I changed today my screen. I didn't realize that um, the questions were on the thing. Thank you. Thank you, um, Elise. And, um, and that's what we have, what we learn from SAR from that particular thing is that we have some difficulties, some um, threats, some challenge that we have in our lives every day. We have our body, we have our soul. So there are three approaches. One approach a person can take, look, I live in this world. I have all the temptations. I have all the things that are difficult for me to do because I'm tempted to do things wrong because in front of us, we see so many things that are wrong and it's just easy to be bad and to be good. And we mentioned it many times, even in, even in um, food and, you know, it's, it's for most people, the chocolate and the ice cream and chips taste better than whole wheat bread and quinoa or something like that, unless you really work on yourself and you dis and you have a taste for healthy food. It's, a little bit, if I can compare, and people work on themselves and they study and they learn and, and, and they have an enjoyment. I know it's hard for us to be in the level that Sora was. Could you imagine all of us would be in the level of Sora? We all look like 20 year old girls or, or, or seven year old girls, as Sora says, or so on. Baruch Hashem. But we all, you know, we all have uh, temptations and we all. And it's difficult to want to do the right things. But when you learn and you do and you acquire a taste for when you feel good when you help someone, you feel good when you rescue an animal that needed help, you feel good when you call a friend that had a hard day, you feel good when you know a friend is going through a difficult time and you try in whatever there is at least a little bit to alleviate her thing, you feel good when you were walking in the street and you were you were in a shopping mall and you were so hungry and you were so tempted to buy a hamburger to buy something not kosher and you ever overcame you bought a banana or you bought a drink that was okay whatever it is and then you feel good i was able to overcome my temptations it's okay i was craving it but i knew it's not good for me it's not good for my soul and my life is not just my body my life is my soul because if god forbid a person is not alive, their body is still there. So why aren't they alive? Because the soul makes me alive. So it's a level to get to. But I, but this is one level that I know it's wrong to do wrong things. And I'm constantly fighting with myself to do the right things. And most of the time, thank God, I'm doing the right choices. Then there can be another level, another thing that the person is saying, you know, I'm going to detach myself from the world from the friends, from everybody. And then I don't have temptations. I don't speak to people. And and then uh, nobody will be able to. Yes, I know. A kosher hammer is not good for the soul either. <laughs> that's good, Elise. So that's why I said they bought a fruit. I didn't say they bought a kosher hamburger. I said they bought a banana, right? Or a drink. Um, or chips. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be deserted from everybody and I'll try to distance myself from everybody. This is a second thing, a second choice. A third choice is, no, I'm going to be living in society with everyone and I'm going to try to be so strong to do the right things that the light, the positivity that I have will have an effect on other people. And this is basically what we're learning from Sarah that we are supposed to try to do. That our goof, our body, in Hebrew, goof is a body, our body should be all of perfection, mind, body, and soul. Why do you put a physical limit? Um, I will answer Cheryl what you asked and then I'll go to what I'm explaining because unfortunately the time of Mashiach did not come yet Cheryl. Cheryl had asked if Sarah was so perfect in everything which she was why did Hashem put uh, all the great people that were 
everybody ended their life in this world to a certain extent. Even Eliyoha Novi, Elijah the prophet, he went up to heaven alive. He didn't even have to be buried because he was so perfect. And it says also that, I don't want to bring in too many things. His mother was pregnant with him in um, 12 months instead of nine. So he was really perfect, perfected. We don't have such a thing now, but I'm bringing too much. I don't want to confuse everybody. Um, but all great people that were very, very great, um, Sarah Bat Asher, Sarah, the daughter of Asher, that was very great, and she lived a thousand years. Um, it says, Hanoch, Hashem took him away because just be, he was so righteous, he didn't have to die, but he just went because there was a curse that came from the um, scene of the tree of knowledge. Chetz et adat, that Adam and Chava sin, that death came to the world. Death did not have to be in the world. And it says that when Moshiach will come, and that's one of the main reasons, big reasons, all the reasons, because we know Hashem wants it, that we daven, that the times of Moshiach will come, because it says, when we say prayers for, in a mourner's house and all of that, it's very sad, but if you understood the Hebrew, it says, Moshiach will come, Hashem will take away all the tears, which means... It says there will be no more mavet, no more death, and so on. So Sora did not pass away, God forbid, as a punishment, and so does nobody, God forbid, as a punishment. You just, the nature of the world because of exile. And when people tell me, well, that's the way the world is, people are born, people are dying. No, people should be born, but people don't have to die. That's the world in exile, in Galut. When Mashiach will come, will be Geula will be uh, the redemption, and then people will not die. And the Rebbe is explaining to us, this is the same thing, but we're learning the, um, no, how should I say, the struggle that we have, that the body has with the soul. And the body is the vessel, is the cleat to the neshama, right? If there's no body, where will the soul go? The soul has to be born into a baby, into a child, and then we grow. When the baby is born, then the shama goes in, and then and that's how the baby is alive. So we have three things as well. How? A person can say three levels. I have to do mitzvot, I have to be a good person, I have to do all those things, and he's always battling. He knows that that's what the soul wants, and he's battling with it. The other thing, um, a person can say the second level, well, it's so hard for me to battle all the time because my soul wants one thing and my body wants something else, so I'm going to put away, put myself away from enjoying this world. So I'm going to not going to, you know, live in a simple home, not buy nice food, not have this, you know, like make myself suffer. So I should not have any enjoyment in the worldly, in worldly manners. This is not the right thing. But uh, at least I'll have to read soon what you wrote if, if we'll have time. The right thing is, that we try to be like Sarah was, to do so much good as much as we can, not as fighting the body, not going away from this world. Yes, to wear nice clothing, but they should be modest. Yes, to eat good food, but it should be healthy. It should be kosher. Yes, to make the house look good because your house is a place like a Beit HaMikdash, like a Mishkan, like a house of God, and have holy books, and a tzedakah box, to be with friends, to do a lot of good, so we should radiate a lot of light, like Sarah did. And by Sarah, she had so much light that it radiated her face, her body, it radiated her physical body as well. And the more godliness will do, the more good will do, it will radiate our... Um, body as well so much that the area around us the at the, the our friends our the, the community the family everybody around us will want to be good because we radiate so much goodness so much kindness so much um goodness kindness positivity 
only good thing. Somebody starting to tell me something bad about someone or, or, or gossip, I stop in a nice way. I smile. Somebody tells me something nasty, I don't get upset. I try not to. I smile. I say, it's okay. Depends on what situation, obviously. It's not easy. I'm giving you examples that it's not easy. And then with that, slowly, I work on myself, but everybody around me as well. So my surroundings become more pure. So I don't have to fight my surroundings, like in the first level. I don't have to run away from the world, like in the second level, but the third level is the best. And that's what we learn from Sarah. That's what the Hashem says. The Torah says that she lived a hundred years, 20 years and seven years, because all the years were excellent. All radiated with so much light, with so much godliness. This Shabbos is a very special Shabbos for many reasons. It's the Shabbos that we read the Parsha of Chayi Sarah, the life of Sarah. And we spoke about how Hashem told Sarah, Hashem told Avram, listen to Sarah. We spoke about the special things that we have as the feminine part of Hashem. And that is so special that it's going to be the highest part when Moshiach comes and we're getting close to it. It's also Shabbat Mevarchim. It's the Shabbos that we bless the new month because we're finishing the month of Cheshvan and next week, Friday, is going to be Rosh Chodesh Kislev. So we're blessing the month of Kislev. The month of Kislev is very special. It has lots of special things that happen in the month of Kislev. It's Hanukkah. By the way, it's also my birthday in Hanukkah. I just feel as well. Shabbos before, Shabbos Mavarchim Kislev. And uh, as we have the custom in Chabad that we say the whole Tehillim on the Shabbos Mavarchim, as much Tehillim as you can read, it's so special because we're blessing the new month and we need Hashem's help that we should have a very good month. This is also the Shabbos that was established to be the Shabbos of Kinus Hashluchim. Kinus Hashluchim means the convention of all the emissaries of the Rebbe. I'm sure you've seen it probably in, maybe in, uh, uh, in Chabad.org or in... Um... <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl, you're so sweet. Uh, you comment our social media. Um, we still have the, because of Corona, unfortunately that it's still not away yet, I meant should be away soon. They did make the convention open in person only to whoever is double vaccinated. So I know my husband went, Rabbi Grona went, Rabbi Zalmi, Rabbi Levi. They, they have to show, they had to upload the double vaccination. Besides, when they came, my husband said it's two hours yesterday again, they um, do a rapid test again before they sign in to go to the sessions. And on the banquet on Sunday, they do again a rapid test. So they check a lot, obviously. But the convention is still on also virtually. So the people that couldn't travel uh, for many reasons um, are able to, to watch it. I think the Shluchim from Europe weren't able to, unless the law changed because there was something with till November 15th, they had some kind of a um, restriction and the convention is now. So there was something, so people couldn't, so they still have it virtual. So the rabbi went, the rabbis went and it's very special. And the reason it was given to this time because Rosh Chodesh Kislev in 1978, in 1978 in Tav Shalom Etchet, the Rebbe suffered a heart attack. I know we spoke about it a few times in Shmini Atzeret. Simcha Torah, the day before Simcha Torah, Shmini Atzeret, in the middle of Akafot, the Rebbe turned white and the Rebbe started massaging his chest. The Rebbe sat down anyway, whatever happened. We won't go into all the details, but the Rebbe had a stroke. I'm sorry, not a stroke, um, a heart attack. And Baruch Hashem, thank God he recovered miraculously. And on Rosh Chodesh Kislev, now you remember when Simcha Torah was, it was a little while ago. So there was quite a while that the Chassidim, nobody saw the Rebbe because the Rebbe was all the time in his room. Then his room became like an op, like a hospital. They brought everything, all the machinery, everything for his heart. What the Rebbe needed was brought to his office because the Rebbe refused to go to the hospital. And the New York State understood who the Rebbe was and uh, basically they brought 
the hospital, the, they brought everything, all, all the things, all the equipment that was needed for the Rebbe's recovery. And on Rosh Chodesh Kislev, was, which will be in a week, was the first time that the Rebbe walked out from 770 and he walked home. Um, he walked home, he walked to the library. Anyway, he, he walked out of the building that people were able to see him and that became a very big holiday, a very big yontem. And then when the, the Chassidim decided to make the convention of the men, so it was always around, it's always the Shabbos before Rosh Chodesh. Shabbat Mevarchim of Kislev. By the way, Rosh Chodesh Kislev is also the yard site of my father-in-law, which was amazing. My father-in-law was the first shliach of the Rebbe, and he passed away on Rosh Chodesh Kislev when all the shluchim were there. And when they went to the funeral, he passed away Motzei Shabbat, Motzei Shabbos, and on Sunday was the Levi of my father-in-law. I remember it like today. And when they passed by 770 with the Oran, with the coffin, they passed by, they stopped the convention and they announced it. And all the thousands of emissaries, all the thousands of rabbis went out to pay their respect, to say bye. And it was so powerful because here is the first emissary and he passes away on Rosh Chodesh Kislev and all the emissaries went out to to say bye. God willing, Moshiach should come soon so we can reunite with all our loved ones on Maine very soon. Another very special thing this year in the Kinos, in the convention is that this year is 30 years since the last convention that the Rebbe spoke to all of us, to all the rabbis. And uh, later was to the Rebbe, since was Chobay Shva, that will be in a little while. Because the last convention that we were merited to hear the Rebbe speak was 1992. The third of the third of Tammuz happened in June 12, was 1994. The Rebbe had a stroke in um, after Purim, right? Before Purim, whatever, before the 27th of Adar. That's around Purim time. And now it's Kisla before Hanukkah. I'm just trying to, for you to see the dates. So in 1992 was the last convention that we heard, that the last talk that the Rebbe spoke to the Shluchim, God willing, Moshiach should come, we should see everybody back again. And the Rebbe said that the last mission that we have, the Rebbe said to everybody, is to greet Moshiach. And every day that we live, everything that we do, the Rebbe said we have to live with that feeling. I'm doing this mitzvah because I want to bring Moshiach to make it alive. So we should really want it. Because the Rebbe said Hashem will bring Moshiach if we're really going to want it. We really have to want it with our heart. But everybody, not just me and not just you and not just her, not just everybody, all of us. And we have to spread it. So everything that we do, it's in order to bring Moshiach closer. And this year is 30 years, 1992. And this year is 2022, right? Well, it's, um, it's 2021, but in the Hebrew date, it's already... It's the, I'm sorry, it's the 30th, I guess the 30th year, I should say, right? Because it's 2021, but in the Hebrew date, it's the, because the English comes a little bit later, like 2022, we're going to have soon, right? But I'm speaking about the Hebrew date. Okay, it was Tavshin Nun Beis, Tavshin Nun Beis, and now it's Tavshin Pei Beis. Okay, so it was still 1991. In the English, I'm sorry, in the English it was still 1991 and now it's 2021. In the Hebrew, because Rosh Hashanah is before, correct? So it was Tavshin Nun Beis, I'm sorry, Tavshin Nun Beis and Tavshin Pem Beis. So not 1992. Um, unless it was, yeah, Tavshin Nun Beis. Um, this Shabbos also, whenever we have the conference 
of all the men, there's also a conference for the children, for the young shluchim. So Shlemel went as well. We were also thinking to send him in person, not to send him in person. It's so important to be with the friends. And he actually wrote a letter to the Rebbe. As you know, that we write a letter to the Rebbe, we put it in one of the books of the Rebbe. And he wrote it because it was his birthday on the 11th of Cheshvan last week. Sunday, so he wrote to the Rebbe a blessing. It was very interesting that the Rebbe wrote to him. Um, the Rebbe writes in the letter there that when it's time of vacation from school, it doesn't mean that we should not be connected. We should still connect ourselves with the teachers or with our friends and get closer and stronger with learning and encourage each other. And we said, wow, it's such an open answer for Shlemel to go to the kinos because he had a reunion Yesterday was an amazing uh, day of celebration because Shlemele is learning part-time in Akiva and part-time is doing online school with friends all over uh, West Coast from all over the world and mostly from, um, he has actually a child also from um, Rostov, I think somewhere in, in Russia that the time is different and from um, California, other friends and they get together and they saw each other, and it was very nice that they chose Shleimel as a representative of all the boys. So he had to bring the Dvar Torah he spoke yesterday. And then they were dancing. I have videos of it. It was so heartwarming to see him, to see all the boys, and see him with all his friends. And he told me, he says, Mommy, I see my friends always only online. So he, he told me names of some boys that when he sees them online, he imagined that they were very short and chubby. For some reason, maybe the way the face looked, and he says, Mommy, I was shocked. I saw my friend yesterday. He's so tall. He's a head taller than me and skinny. And he says, Another friend that I thought was tall and skinny, I saw him yesterday, and he was short and chubby. It was cute. You know, he was just saying, I remember my brochia, actually, when she was in a line school. And I think Hayester also, she told me that of Remy when they went, they said, Mommy, everybody looks so different in person. We see them on the on the webcam. You just see a face. We imagine them differently. Then we see them in person. They're like different people. It was very, very sweet. And what I wanted to say, part of the speech that Shleimullah spoke yesterday is what the, my husband spoke 20 years ago, when it was 20 years for the last time that we heard the Rebbe speak and uh, about the Kinos. And the Rebbe spoke, the Rebbe said that in this Parsha, in Parsha's Chai Sara, he speaks about that Sarah passed away. Yitzchak wanted, needed to get married. And Avram sends his servant, who was his servant, Eliezer, right? To the family, to his family, to Haran, which was like, I guess, Persia, now in, in, in today's world, and to go find a wife for Yitzchak from his family. Why did Yitzchak go himself to find a wife? If you remember, we learned that Yitzchak was the only forefather that didn't go out of Israel. Avram and Yaakov did. Uh, Avram was born in Israel. Yitzchak was born in Israel. Yaakov was born in Israel, Yaakov went out of Israel. Uh, um, Avram traveled back and forth, but Yitzchak was born in Israel and passed away in Israel because he was so holy. Since he was brought up on the altar, he, was, he had a very special holiness to himself that he wasn't allowed to leave the land of Israel because the land of Israel is a special holiness that the rest of the world doesn't have. So that's why Yitzchak couldn't leave so Avram told his servant, you have to go and bring the wife to here because my son cannot leave Israel. And we know the whole story how Eliezer went and he met Rivka in the well, and we won't go into the details. You can open up a Parsha, you can read on the Chabad.org, everything about the Parsha, more commentary because there's so much, it's so rich, so much there to learn. But what we're learning from it, the Rebbe said, is that in this parsha we're speaking about the first shlichut, the first mission, the first emissary. Avraham was the Rebbe. Avraham was the rabbi. He was the leader of the generation. And he sent Eliezer on a mission to, to find a wife for Yitzchak. And you see in the whole dialogue there was very interesting. Eliezer said exactly word by word, what Avram told him to say, to do. 
to act. And, and when he came and he introduced himself, he didn't say, I am so-and-so. He said, Eliezer, Eved Avraham Anuchi. Eved Avraham, I am the servant, I am the slave of Avraham. I am the, the messenger of Avraham. Whatever Avraham tells me, that's what I do. And the Rebbe said, it's so amazing because here, the Kinos HaShluchim is in this Parsha. Because all of us are messengers by Hashem. All of us are not just the rabbis in the Rebbe Tzor HaShluchim of the Rebbe, obviously through Hashem, but all of us are messengers by Hashem. We all came to this world with a purpose. We all came to this world with a mission. We all have something special to accomplish. Many, many special things to accomplish, and we have to remember that. And we have to remember to listen to those missions and to listen and to do it, and to do the special godly missions that Hashem wants us to do. And it's very interesting what Shalem was saying in his uh, thing yesterday, that he is named after his grandfather, after my father-in-law, may Shalem be well for many long years of Maine. And um, my father-in-law was, was the first emissary of the Rebbe, right? He opened the first place that the Rebbe opened was Morocco. And it's very, there are many, many letters that are in those books that we write in, that we put in a letter to ask Rebbe for a reference. There are many letters that are written. It says, Shlomo Matas, that are written to my father-in-law. There are many things that people had learned later on how to act in many situations when we live in rural communities and how to behave in, in communities in far and close, in schools and so on. We learn from those letters because that was the beginning. They went in, they got married in 1950 and they went right away. And that was the beginning of the Rebbe's leadership. So many of the things that the Rebbe has established, how to do, what to do, and so on and so forth, are in those letters that the Rebbe wrote as answers, as, as directions, and so on to my father-in-law, to my mother-in-law, to, to my in-laws, which is very interesting. And what did Eliezer say? Eliezer, remember, he was the servant of Avraham. He was the first emissary. The first thing that the Torah is teaching us how somebody had to go do a mission for someone higher than him. And always when Eliezer spoke, he said, whatever I say, I do, I'm Eved Avraham. I'm doing because Avraham told me. And hello, Rivka, nice to join us at least for, for a little bit. So good to see you. Hash, uh, Eliezer told the people they wanted, they should want to send Rivka. He said, you should know that my master of Rahm signed everything that he says, all the riches, everything that he says. Natan Hakol, he gave everything away to his son Yitzhak. He gave everything to him and he will inherit everything. So they should want to send their daughter. You know, there was like a a um, a positive thing, a, 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 a um, how should I say, a, a hint or what, not a hint. Can't think of the right word. That they should want to send their daughter to marry Yitzchak when he knew that Rivka was the right one. What did the Rebbe say? The Rebbe told us, what does it mean that Avraham, Avram gave everything to Yitzchak. He gave him not just the riches, but he gave him all the blessings, all the power. What do we learn from it? Shlaimel was saying yesterday in his speech, he said, what do we learn from it is that Avram, the Rebbe, we look at the Rebbe. And the Rebbe gave us everything. He gave us the Torah that we can learn, explanations. He gave us a lot of positive energy. <laughs> he gave us so much explanation, so much power, so many things, so much guidance what we have to do, but call everything in order for us to complete the last mission that God wants us to complete, that Hashem wants us to complete. What is the last mission? Is to bring Moshiach. We have all of it, and now it's 30 years. 30 years is a special time. It's a special number. Every 10 years, you know, it's a special number, a round number. So God willing, girls, that this Shabbos, that all the many representatives around the whole world are congregating together in New York, learning together. Tomorrow, Shlemele is going to the Rebbe's holy place 
the shluchim probably are going there on Sunday because the boys are going tomorrow. So I, I think the I think the men are going on Sunday because they don't want to be on the same day. <laughs> the weekend or so so crowded. We're all going there. We're all gonna daven. We are davening that Hashem should stop all the sufferings in any kind from any, from anyone, from humanity, from the animal kingdom from the pollution, from all the things that can be wrong. Hashem should take it all away. Hashem should bring us Moshiach. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll answer you soon. Shalem turn 12, can our one year to his bar mitzvah. God willing. Hashem should give us the strength. It's nice to see you, Rish. It's nice to have open up the cameras, but you don't have to. It's okay, no pressure. It is a special Shabbos. We're blessing the new month of Kislev. We, I'm just trying to put back all those things to make myself excited as well and inspired. It's the the part of Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah. We know what true life is. True life is that our Neshama is so strong, is so alive, has so much light, ready, it's so much light that it even affects our physical body. It affected her to look beautiful, not just on the inside, because that's what the Torah meant. Obviously, she was so beautiful on the inside, which means on the spiritual things that it's hard for us to tap sometimes, but it even radiated to her face, to her body, that she looks so young and beautiful. And the feminine powers that we have. Remember, Hashem told Avraham, Everything that Sarah tells you, listen to her, which means that the feminine voice is very strong, is very right, is very special now that we're coming to the time of Mashiach. It wasn't as, as appreciated and as holy and as special years before, but now that we're getting to the, close to the time of Mashiach, is Nekevat Sovev Gever. The feminine is going around the Gever, around the masculine. We have to be strong, but not in a way I'm going to rule over you. No, we're not trying to rule over anybody. We're trying and we are using our feminine powers to bring the Shekhinah, to bring godliness down here, to bring Moshiach down here, to be the emissaries of Hashem, to do the right things, to have an influence on our spouses, on our children, on our grandchildren, on our friends, on our work associates on our society wherever we can whatever we can to have a positive energy may we all have a wonderful shabbos um i want to say for myself i really miss uh the two men that left that are there but they're enjoying and they're getting a lot of uh how should i say boy a lot of energy, a lot of spirit, a lot of strength when they come back. My son Levi is actually leaving tonight. Zalmi is already there. Abba Groner left last night. And all Shluchim around the world, whoever left, they should really come with lots of energy. And the main thing that they should, that Moshiach should come even before that, because for God to bring Moshiach is, nothing is hard for God. He just have to, he has to do it. And we have to, we, and we're going to show him that we really, that we really want it strong. I know Absas makes the God, uh, the, the heart uh, ponder, as you wrote. And um, so hard to finish, I have to say, girls. It's already a minute to nine. Everybody have a good Shabbos. I feel bad for those girls who didn't join last week. We had almost double the people. Hopefully they didn't forget because I didn't set reminders. It's so wonderful to see everybody who comes with reminders. But we all learned. I know many people listen to the recording. And uh, a lot of uh, warm, positive energy to all of us. And may we see each other in that, may we really feel, I'm just thinking something else, you know, maybe when we hear the Parsha, whether we go to Shul and we hear the Parsha or we don't go to Shul, we hear the Parsha, we read the Parsha at home, feel the beautiful life that Sarah had. Understand what it means, because this is very deep. Understand what it means to really Right, just love, it. thank you all, to really cherish godliness, to really enjoy godliness, to really have enjoyment in right things. I want to finish the class. It reminds me of, it says, Nochum of Chernobyl. I love you too. Chernobyl is a 
town in Russia, as far as I know, maybe in Ukraine or Russia, Reb Nochum of Chernobyl, who lived, I don't know how many years ago, maybe 300, 200 years ago, what a big tzaddik. It says that he was, um, he was a heavy person in his body, he was heavy. But he wasn't heavy from eating a lot. Could you imagine? He was heavy from the enjoyment that he had when he would say, Omen Yeheshmei Rabba. When people said Kaddish in Shul and you say Omen, and you say Omen, and you say Omen Yeheshmei Rabba, Mevorach, right? You answer, which means from mitzvahs that he did from the davening, he had so much enjoyment that that enjoyment caused him Usually when we eat a lot, we enjoy it, <laughs> and we become big, you know, gain weight. He gained weight from enjoyment. It's so hard for me to understand it because I'm so physical. But I'm praying that I should be able to, to come to a little level, you know, and all of us should become to a level to enjoy a good davening, let's say, to enjoy when you learn, to enjoy when you help someone, the not just thing. physical things. And slowly, it takes time, girls. It takes a lot of work. We have to work on ourselves to to think, to ponder, to to um, no, to meditate, and, and then we will enjoy it. And, and God willing, this will allow us to do more mitzvot, to become more godly. So you'll do more mitzvot because if you enjoy something, you want to be in it. You want to spend time there. If you enjoy taking a siddur and pray, taking a teilim and read, you will waste less time watching TV and looking at stuff. I'm not saying you're doing it, but any person, okay? I'm not blaming anybody, God forbid. But you will have less time to think negative things. You will have less time to have grudges. You have less, less time to feel, to think, oh, this one makes me feel better. This one makes me this, because your mind is occupied with holy stuff. And that will make you a happier person and be more positive and so on and so forth. It's all changing. We speak about sure? it in so many ways, how we can help ourselves. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you so much for joining. And um, oh, I can see here. And Shabbat Shalom. Nice to see you. All Eugenia and Risha and Loredana and Rivka and everybody else who I can see them or I cannot see them. Um, you all here, Dari, Jennifer, Elise, Emily, and whoever else I didn't mention, and Adina and Cheryl. Sorry if I didn't mention your names. And um, should have an uplifted week and a wonderful Chodesh. Take care. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Chernobyl, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, Cheryl already left. She's writing Reb Nochel from Chernobyl. I didn't think about the nuclear. When I think Chernobyl, I think about Reb Nochel of Chernobyl. I try to think about the positivity there. Wow.